point out some of the major structures of the pelvic girdle. Now, in class we said that the appendicular skeleton included all the bones of the upper extremity, lower extremity, the pectoral girdle, and the pelvic girdle. So we're concentrating specifically on the, on the pelvic girdle in this videotape. Pelvic girdle, of course, consists of two bones. A pair of bones that probably all your life have been called the pelvic bones, but now they are each referred to as a coxal bone. So here's the coxal bone on the left side, the coxal bone on the right hand side. Another name for these two bones are the innominate bones. As you can see, these, besides serving for muscle attachment and weight bearing and protection of pelvic viscera and so forth, will be functioning to attach the, all the lower extremity to the axial skeleton. Now, I'm going to use an individual coxal bone, which is kind of difficult to follow along with because when you pick it up and you handle it and so forth, it's very difficult initially to figure out what is superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, that type of thing. But it's a good bone to study off of in order to get the basic parts down. And then we'll transfer what I go over this onto the bones with the, on the skeleton itself. Now, you see this great big depression here. If you always remember that that's going to be facing laterally because the head of the femur is going to articulate there to form the hip. You also see this opening right here. This is going to be facing more towards the anterior. So therefore, on this individual coxal bone, which is a left one, then you are looking pretty much at the anterior side, the medial side, and obviously the big portion that's flared is going to be extending up posteriorly. So if you make that definition that the large socket here is going to be medial, I'm sorry, lateral, then that's going to help you with defining your directions. Now, this one bone that we're calling the coxal is actually three bones that fuse together during fetal development. And we re still retain the terminology, the three individual bones, when we describe this. Those three individual bones that are fused together to comprise this one are the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Let me point out where those regions are. The ilium is the largest portion and it's going to include all of this large flared portion that is extending out to the side. So all this portion that I'm covering up with my hands. This is all the ilium. The pubis is this part that I'm covering with my hand here, the part that is facing anteriorly. So the pubis. And the issue is going to be this portion of it that I'm covering up with my hand here that extends back more posteriorly. So the three parts, again, of the coxal bone are the ilium here, as covered up by my hands, the pubis here, and the issue here. Now, in knowing those three regions, we can now go through and we can identify some of the major landmarks on this bone. For example, on the ilium portion, the ridge that's on the superior aspect is the iliac crest. All this can be felt as the tops of your hips, so the iliac crest. Now, if you run your finger along the iliac crest anteriorly and go as far as the crest anteriorly, then it terminates as a point, kind of a blunt, rounded point that I'm touching with my fingers right here. This very important anatomical landmark is the anterior superior iliac spine. If you follow the iliac crest posteriorly, all the way around posteriorly, then you would find a posterior inferior iliac spine also in this point within this area here. If you still continue to run your finger around the iliac crest and beyond the posterior inferior iliac spine, then this large indentation that I just am running my fingers through here is the greater sciatic notch of this bone. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve within the body that extends out from the sacral vertebra and passes down along the posterior aspect of the thigh. And you can pretty well approximate the size of your sciatic nerve by putting index and middle finger together within this area, and that nerve pretty much fills up this greater sciatic notch. Now, if I turn the coxal bone around so that you're looking at it in the posterior side, 
Then again, our landmarks were the, oh yeah, crest. Anteriorly, we have the anterior superior iliac spine. Posteriorly, we had the posterior superior iliac spine. We had the greater sciatic notch. And then extending down into this area here, where it's kind of rounded, kind of knobby in its texture, then this is the ischial tuberosity, the portion of the coxal bone that you're really sitting upon. And just superior to that ischial tuberosity, this projection right here would be referred to as the ischial spine. Be referred to as the ischial spine. Now, as we come around anteriorly, then we find that we're onto the pubic bone or the pubis. And this area here in life, there's a piece of cartilage that is overlying this area, which will serve as the joint to connect this coxal to the coxal on the other side on the anterior aspect to form a joint that we'll call the pubic symphysis. You don't see a pubic symphysis if you're working with the individual bone because that pubic symphysis is a joint that is created as this bone articulates with the coxal on the other side. So I'll point that out momentarily on the skeleton. But as we come around from the issue and around to the pubis, we're also making the circumference of a rather large opening. Now openings within bones are called foramen. This individual foramen is called the obturator foramen. So that that I have my finger through is the obturator foramen. Then lastly, this large socket that serves as the receptacle for the head of the femur to create the hip joint is referred to as acetabulum. Acetabulum. 